you know, the be in from the beginning. So you know that the timeline, Father, everything that's going on in our life. So we bless you this day, Father God, just allowing us to, to be intimate with our Heavenly Father. There's no greater joy. There's no greater excitement to being intimate with you, the creator of heaven and earth, Lord, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, that you've allowed us, Lord God, just to talk to you. You said, therefore, come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in times of need. So we thank you, Lord God, that you have given us a personal invitation just to come before your presence, Lord God. So tonight we cry out to you, Lord. We seek your face tonight, Lord God, but we want to hear what's on your heart, Lord, through your servant, Lord God, through the word of the Lord, through the video, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Father. You know, we're living in the last days, Lord. So we realize and understand the value, the purpose of prayer and just communing with you, spending time with you, listening to you, Lord. I'm reminded, Lord, it's just like a child or children that just sit at the dinner table and just spend time with their father. And you just download to us what's in your heart, but you also listen to us, what's concerning us, what's, in, what's going on in our life, what is our hopes, what is our desires, Lord God, what drives us, Lord God. And hearing your direction, your insight, Father God, you know, that's what prayer is, just talking to you, just being ministered to you, but sharing it with you, Lord God. Because you take such delight in just hearing your children to talk and to just open up to you, Lord. But you also provide because you're full of wisdom. you omnipotent, Lord. All power belongs to you, Father God. You have the final say so in life and death, Father God. So you have all the answers, Lord God. You know everything, Lord. Everything was created for your good pleasure. And you had a purpose. You have a purpose for our life, Lord God. You called us to be intimate with you, to glorify you, to magnify you, just to touch lives along this journey that we're on, Father. So we just thank you this, this, this evening. We bless your name. We glorify your name. Precious Holy Spirit, speak to your children today. Yes, Lord, where we, where we may be hurting and broken and downcasted and full of doubt and confused and dealing with sorrow and pain and setbacks, Lord God. Speak to your children because your words are life, Father. Your words are everlasting. Your word is the foundation in which we stand on. Lord, your word gives us life and, and hope, Lord God. Your word, Lord God, it's your word because it's part of who you are. It's the word of the Lord. So we pray the word of the Lord has already been declared, has already been decreed in heaven. So we bless your name, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh merciful God. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. Again, I like to just say welcome as we spend time tonight. Just allowing the Lord to minister to us and also just to glorify and magnify his name. A pastoral exhortation is going to come out of Psalms 55 and 1. And it, this is really powerful because it, it, it's talking about David, King David at the time. And I'm going to read the scripture and I'm going to give an exhortation. Hopefully that will build us up and encourage us this evening. The word the Lord declares, give ear it's Psalms 55, verse 1, I'm sorry. It says, give ear to my prayer. You know, this is really a lamentation. A lamentation is an, a passionate expression of grief and sorrow. I mean, there's something going on in my life, Lord God, that I need answers. I need your intervention. I need your help, Lord God. Otherwise, David is saying, I'm not going to make it, Lord. He says, give ear to my prayer, O God. And do not hide yourself from my supplications. Supplications is asking or begging for something earnestly or humbly. And so in essence, what he's doing, everything within David is crying out, Lord, I need for you to listen to me. What is going on? It comes out of 2 Samuel. This is just the exhortation, saints. It comes out of 2 Samuel chapter uh, 15, verse 30. It's the time when David is dealing with Absalom, his son, and also Ahithophel. Ahithophel was his, his confidant. He was, in David, he was in David's inner circle. David confided in him on everything. But what's interesting, Ahithophel was the grandfather of Bathsheba. 
Mariah, uh, Bathsheba's husband was that was his grand that was his son-in-law. So David is has has been intimate with Ahithophel, and now Ahithophel is now constantly um, <clears throat> Absalom, who's trying to kill David and take his throne. And they said Ahithophel, when he speaks, is just like listening and hearing the oracles of the Lord. So he has a real problem. So he's saying, David went up by the accent of Mount of Olives and wept as he went up. And he had his head covered and went barefoot. He was broken. So this is the lamentation. He sinned, he violated, and now the seeds that have been planted has come forth through Absalom and it hit the field. So David is crying out to the Lord, I, I, I confess before you, Lord. That's what he said. He said, give ear. I need you to listen, Lord God. I need you to hear me. I need you to give my full attention. And that is what we go through a lot of times in life. When things seem to be overwhelmed because of the things that we've done, maybe the sin, the violation, that's why the word says to blot out my transgressions, wash me from my iniquities, heal me from my sin. When we violate the word of the Lord, it opens up the door to allow the enemy access. And this is what David is dealing with. But God is so faithful. He's so faithful. God is so loving. God is so kind. See, the enemy wanted to destroy David, that the word of the Lord would never come to, come to pass. Because remember, Jesus is called the son of David. Jesus is a direct descendant of David. So we see what's on the line here. And David violated. But as he's walking, he's ascending up Mount of Olives crying out broken crying out asking for forgiveness asking for mercy hi give ear to my prayer oh god and do not hide yourself from my supplications see prayer means that there are times the intimacy we're giving everything to the lord i'm just crying out everything within me my mind my will my emotions we're broken we're crying out and we're praying we're seeking his face because we want god to hear us we want him to move on our behalf that's a loving father that's a loving father in these last days in these last days prayer is critical Prayer is a lifeline. We must be able to pray and to cry out and believe God because when we pray the word of God, when we cry out, when we seek his face, then God, begin, the Holy Spirit begins to do something in my heart. He begins to turn things around in my heart. He begins to bring my, he gives me a soft, sensitive heart that I'm sensitive to the Holy Spirit. He begins to remove all the debris that's in me from violations, from sin, from selfishness, from ignoring godly divine counsel, from grieving the Holy Spirit, from not seeking the God as the preeminence. See, that's what prayer does. But it requires commitment. It requires continuing fervency, crying out day and night and seeking God and his word. That is the word of exhortation for my children, for God's children tonight. So we want to prepare our hearts for the video, Acts 12, 1 through 16, by Dr. Charles Stanley, prayer. This is really a very powerful, powerful word of the Lord for a number of reasons. It's really a blueprint in what God is showing us how to be successful against the enemy. It speaks of life and death because we see here that Herod is bringing violence against the church. And what's so interesting is that this was Herod Agrippa, who was the grandson of Herod the Great. If you know out of Matthews 2, 16 and 7, Herod the Great was the one that tried to kill Jesus Christ. The baby and killed all those children two years of age and under in Bethlehem and, and the surrounding region. So that same spirit of murder 
that was in his grandfather has transferred now to Herod Agrippa. So there are four points I want to glean from this video. The first one was prayer is the most powerful weapon gifted by the true and living God. Do I have that, uh, those slides up? Cool. Prayer is the most powerful, most powerful weapon gifted by the true and living God because it deals with, like in this case, life and death. That's what we're dealing with, spirit of murder. Herod Agrippa, who had already killed James, had now seized Peter, and he was due for execution the next day. But the church prayed in agreement in unison to the word of the Lord that God's divine purpose would be manifested. So that is the first thing I want to glean from this video. Prayer is the most powerful weapon gifted by the true and living God. That's who we pray to, a God that is alive and living, the creator of heaven and earth. And I want to dwell on that. I want to repeat what was all, came through the video. Number two, fervency, a fervent prayer, which is a constant prayer, not only stands before God, but also enters into his ear. When there's fervent prayer, there's a crying out. Everything within me is crying out, searching God day and night. There is no letting go until the word of the Lord has been manifested into what we're praying for, what we're crying for, like the church has been manifested. The Holy Spirit may wake you up three in the morning. He wants to spend time with you. I'm speaking from experience, fervency. Everything within me is crying out day and night, meditating on the word of the Lord throughout the day, allowing the Holy Spirit to bring back what, what we're praying about based on the word of the Lord. Screaming, crying, crying out, calling God, praying, seeking the Lord's face continuously. It may be a week. It may be a month. Whatever season that God has us in is about fervency because now my heart has begun to change. I'm more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. My desire is to love him, walk in obedience, be obedient, study the word, be able to hear God. I don't want to dwell too much i'm sorry i have to control myself the third the third let's go to the next slide the holy spirit enables us to call and pray effectively with results according to his will so when i'm fervently praying continuously praying and crying out to the lord the Holy Spirit is now doing a work in me, renewing the spirit of the mind, creating a sensitivity in my heart against sin, desiring to spend time with the Lord, desiring to hear from him with an expectation, like sitting at the gate, like Lot. I'm waiting to hear from God. I want to see what's going on. What are you saying today, Lord? I've been crying out to you, Lord. I, I need help. Like the church in Acts 12, 1 through 16. But it's the Holy Spirit praying the word. Faith comes by hearing the word, praying the word, which God has already decreed in heaven. He's already declared. We're just echoing what God has already decreed and already stated. You see, the Holy Spirit only hears, only speaks what he hears the Father. So the Holy Spirit enables us. He strengthens us. He encourages us. He motivates us to call into the Lord continuously. That's what he's saying in the church. Let me move on. I don't want to just repeat. Then four is must be in agreement when we pray. How can two walk together unless they're in agreement? My prayer should be praying the word of the Lord. Therefore, I'm in agreement with heaven. I'm in agreement with the Holy Spirit. When we pray with a brother and a sister in the Lord, we must be in agreement because there's power in agreement. Where there are two or more in agreement, the Lord is present. The Lord is present. 
We're dealing in a time when the spirit of murder is running rampant in our society. We're dealing with, with plagues. We're dealing with uh, mayhem. We're dealing with job loss, financial, sickness, disease. We must be in agreement with the word of the Lord. That's where that fervency comes in. Continu continuously to pray. Delight yourself in the Lord. and He will give you the desires of your heart. But your desires change. And it comes in agreement with the Lord when we pray in fervently. When there's constant, consistent prayer. We're bombarding heaven with prayer every single day. It is now a lifestyle. Because we're waiting and expecting a breakthrough. And then the enemy comes to try to bring discouragement. The enemy comes to try to bring distractions that we don't hear, we don't, we don't see, we think it's me. That's the thoughts that came from me. No, it's the Holy Spirit when it lines up with the word of the Lord. But that consistency, day in and day out, that consistency must be in agreement when we pray. So those were the four points that I gleaned from the video. A powerful word. Like I said, a powerful word. Because he was dealing, they, the church in, in uh, Acts was dealing with Herod Agrippa, who had the spirit of murder. He was possessed. He had the spirit of murder that came from his grandfather, Herod the Great, that wanted to kill Jesus. So if you have a demon that wanted to kill Jesus, you know what they were dealing with. You know what the church was dealing with, that ancient spirit. They wanted to destroy the, the Christians because the Jews hated them. Herod Agrippa had been locked up because of his, his decision. He spoke against Rome. So now the Jews that hated the Christians were his constituents. So he wanted to make sure that they were in agreement, that they were happy with what he was doing against the Christians because he didn't want Rome to come knocking on his door. It was all about his pride. That's what the enemy is, spirit of pride. Spirit of pride. And that's what we're dealing with today. That same spirit that was in Herod the Great back in Matthews 2, 16 and 17. That same spirit that's in now Herod Agrippa now is in our society because spirits don't die. They, they're still living. They don't die because they have not been sentenced to the lake of fire yet. So they're still living. They're still affecting lives. So that's what we're dealing with in our society, that spirit of murder, that ancient spirit. So fervency. In prayer, constant prayer is crucial. It's life and death, healing and sickness. Even though we may be inside the wall of protection overall, but so many of our loved ones are free agents. They have not committed their life to Christ. We see what is happening. It's like birth pains that's being manifested in our society right now. And you know, as a mother, the birth pains increase. They get more intense. And that's what we're dealing with. So God is calling us like in the word. Fervency in prayer. Crying out with everything within me. Crying out day and night continuously. Not giving up. Not listening to the lies of the enemy. God says, my sheep know my voice. They would not listen to a stranger. So God said, we must learn his voice. We must learn his voice that comes in praying the word, that comes in studying the word, that fervency, that comes in being intimate with the Father through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's go to the summary in question because I don't want to repeat what has already been declared out of Acts. Summary in question. I could take a little bit more time here. Luke 18 and 1, where the Lord declares that men, what time is it? 9.40. 747. Okay. I was trying to stay on track. Okay, cool. Luke 18 and 1. Yeah, I'm geeked up, uh, thanks. You know, I, I enjoy this. I, I love to just talk and share the gospel. But anyway, Luke 18 and 1 says that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Why did God say that? He's talking about the widow woman who kept going to the unjust judge every day, frequently consistently and he kept rejecting her but she kept going to the point he just he didn't care nothing about god and he definitely didn't care nothing about humanity that's the type of judge that he was but she kept annoying him she kept harassing him in a godly way because she needed to be helped she needed help 
from my adversaries. This was a legal issue. So the word of the Lord says that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. So that tells me that there are times which is prevalent when we continuously pray it and nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. We can lose heart. We can get discouraged. We can give up. It doesn't make no sense. God is not listening to me. He doesn't care. See, now the enemy is beginning to torment. He's beginning to manipulate our mind because, you know, he's crafty. He's, he's a, I meant Brother Barrett used to always say he's an evil genius. So God says that men should always pray and not lose heart. Why? Because God always does right, number one. He always does what is right. Always. No exception. Number two. He's filled with compassion. Our heavenly father, that's why he said, continue, continue to pray. Don't give up. Don't lose heart. Don't get discouraged because I'm a God of compassion. I hear you. I care about you. I love you. I see what you're experiencing. I see what you're going through. I am the great high priest. I understand. I can relate. I have not forsaken you. Earthly parents being evil knows how to give good things to their children. How much more? Our father. That's why I say don't lose heart. God don't lie. He don't pretend. He don't make believe. He don't manipulate. He's the real deal. He's the truth. He's the reality. So God always does right, number one. He's filled with compassion for believers who suffer. Yeah, so we have saints that are dealing with physical sickness, mental challenges, relational issues. The word of the Lord, don't give up. Don't give up. Continue to pray. When we pray fervently, I'm coming to the Lord. I'm coming to the throne of mercy and grace. I'm declaring the word of the Lord. I'm bringing back to you what you've already declared, what you already said, Lord. You not, you don't lie. You don't pretend. You are God. You are faithful and just. Continue to continue like that, like the widow woman. Continue to go to the Lord. Cry day and night. Allow the word of the Lord. Meditate on it like he told Joshua. Meditate on my word. Let the word get on the inside. Begin to remove all the debris. Begin to take a stand against the deception, against the lies of the enemy, against the manipulation of the enemy. That's why prayer is such a powerful tool. It's life and death. It's healing and deliverance. It's salvation. It's divine protection. When that same murderous spirit that was on her Agrippa that's moving in this world, moving in this nation, moving in our cities, the word of God says in, in Psalms, there are individuals that have committed their life to, to the enemy. They can't even sleep unless they're thinking about creating mayhem, murder, robbery, rape, home invasion, carjacking. It's in the word. So we're dealing with those spirits that are harassing individuals. At night, they're meditating. They're thinking about, how can I rob somebody? How can I do something? They don't even realize what they're doing because they're being manipulated. They're being used by the enemy, Jeremiah 29 and 12. I love this scripture. I love this scripture. He says, when they were in captivity, they were in captivity, and he was locked up. Jeremiah the prophet, a man after God's own heart. When you are really seeking the word of, seeking to glorify the Lord, spending time with the Lord, when you're really giving your all to the Lord, you are on a hit list. Remember the old Western uh, movies in the sheriff's office where they had the, mo had the wanted poster? Dead or alive, X amount of dollars. In the, in, in the spirit realm, Jeremiah. Elijah, Elijah, Peter, Hezekiah, you and I, when we're serious about the things of God, want to glorify him, want to magnify him, want to exhaust him, want to fulfill our divine purpose in the earth, want to touch lives, want to bring godly divine counsel, interceding, intercession in the marketplace. God, 
highlights the individual. You go and give a word of the Lord. Someone that's in bondage, someone is sick and dying. In the name of Jesus, these brothers on the corner, in the name of the Lord, walk in the street, the elderly in nursing homes, living behind bars on their windows and their doors because of the fear, because of the neighborhood, because of the, the crime. In the name of Jesus, these young people that's trying to do what is right, but they're being pressured. Women being abused, young girls being manipulated and, and molested, even little children are being manipulated, going to certain schools and the, and, and, and the teachers may not even know the Lord. They could be a witch. Call upon me, my God, and go and pray to me. That's what he's, Jeremiah is telling those in captivity. And I will listen to you. See, when there's a fervency in prayer, that's what these are prayers that moves God. When there's a fervency in prayer, we're going for it. Lord, I'm bringing it back to you, your word. I'm declaring your word, Lord. This is what you said in your word, Father God. You are faithful to your word, Lord God. Yes, Manasseh, Manasseh, Hezekiah's son. This brother was wicked. He was wicked, wicked. He was wicked. Wouldn't listen. Cause. Israel to sin through his children to Moloch. In essence, he murdered them. Had ungodly statues, Baal, and the host of heaven in the house of God worshiping them. He was just wicked. God brought judgment against the brother. He had a life sentence, I think, in Babylon, locked down, locked up. He wasn't getting out. Life without parole. But in that time period, the Holy Spirit was dealing with this man. He was wicked. I mean, he was wicked. He was wicked. I have to continue to say that because the word declares this brother was wicked. He was more wicked than Ahab. And Ahab sold himself to sin. Call upon me. Go and pray to me. I will listen. I will be attentive. I will hearken. I see what's going on in your life. I hear the prayers, the prayers that's coming up before me, standing at attention before Almighty God in the name of Jesus. Then the prayers that enter into his ears. That's the intimacy. When we are fervent in prayer, it's such a level of intimacy. It's like we're sitting at the dining room table, just talking to God face to face, just re 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 revealing everything in me. They're saying everything, my issues, my concerns, my, my, my sin, what I'm afraid, what I'm dealing with. And just he's listening. He's paying attention because he has the answer, because he's faithful. He's loving. He's kind. He's tender. He's long suffering. Then he says, seek me and find me. So first he says, call on me. Then pray to me. I will listen to you because I'm God. I care about you. I'm concerned about you. You're important to me. You are valuable to me. Hallelujah. Then he said, I want you to seek me now with all your heart. I want you to seek me day in, day out, night and day. He said, I want to be on your mind all day long throughout the day. This is a lifestyle change because I want to take you to a whole nother level. That's what Jeremiah is saying. This is a whole nother level. This is not praying at night. And that's it. This is a whole different level because the warfare is so intense. Because souls are in the balance. Lie, I mean, like, like today, they had that fire in, in, in the Bronx. All kind of people died. Children. They had a fire the other day in Philadelphia. Double-digit people dying. This is See, that's the enemy. That spirit of murder that was inherit the great Herod of grip and that same spirit in the name of Jesus. Why God said, you got to seek me. Your life is in the balance and not only your life, but your loved ones, your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your uncles, those that you come in contact with. See, when we pray fervently, when we're constantly praying and crying out to God, God begins to change the condition of my heart. And I see the hurting people's lives, just day-to-day -day operation, walking in and noticing and observing. You see the brokenness. You see the despondency. You see the discouragement. You see the hopelessness. It ain't about the money. They're dealing with it, too, because it's a spirit. When you search for me with all your heart, with everything within me, your mind, your will, your emotions, everything, question. What can cause you to become discouraged or possibly feel hopeless? 
That's the question. What can cause you to become discouraged or possibly feel hopeless? Mm. Yes, Lord. That's the question. Let's go to the next slide. In the name of Jesus, I bless your name, Father. You're speaking, Holy Spirit, through your word. Cleanse us. Cleanse us, Lord. Give us a desire. Give us a hunger. Give us a heart for you, Lord God. For you, Lord God, in the things of God. Give us a heart for evangelism. Give us a heart for those that are lost, Lord. Elijah, powerful man of God. Stop the rain. Started the rain. Killed 450 false prophets. Yes. Raised that little boy, the, the widow his son, from the dead. And he got a letter from Jezebel. Broke him. This man was powerful. In the name of G, he raised two from the, I believe he raised two from the dead. Elisha may have raised two. Elijah may have raised one, Elisha raised two, because he, he had a double anointing. What can cause you to become discouraged or possibly feel hopeless? We take a stand against the spirit of murder. We take a stand against the demonic spirits or familiar spirits, Lord God, that is causing your people in bondage in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus, we take a stand in agreement with your word, Father God. You will send your mercy and your truth from heaven. It's your word that brings life. It's your word that brings healing. It's your word that brings encouragement. Can we go to, uh, yeah, there we go. Hallelujah. I want to keep track of time. Okay, I got some time to work now. Psalms 119.49. This, this, this is powerful. Well, all the word of God is powerful, but this, this is good here. Psalms 119.49. Let me go there. Yes, Jesus, speak Holy Spirit. You are wonder. Hallelujah. Verse 49. Remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. This is a meditation on the excellencies of the word of God. When there is fervency in prayer, when there is constant prayer, God speaks. But a lot of times, saints, a lot of times the enemy is so deceptive and clever, he brings distractions that we miss or we don't hear or we think that's me thinking that. That's what he does. He, 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 he's good at what he does. But see, when there's prayer that moves God, the Holy Spirit cleans it up, he may come back again with the word of the Lord that we missed the first time. So the psalmist said, Lord, remember the word that you gave me. Not that God forgets. Not that he doesn't remember. But when there's fervency, we, we go to the word. We declare the word. We bring the word before the Lord. Lord, you declared this. Remember what you said through your word, through your teaching, through your signs and wonders. Through your, 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 your dreams and visions that lines up with the word. Remember, Lord. Remember. See, that's what fervency is. That I'm, 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 I'm going all full, full course towards the Lord. I'm bringing out all the arsenal. I'm using all the, the weaponry that God has given us as believers. Upon which you have caused me to hope. See, there's a rank, Well, there's a word that God gives that gives us hope. We need hope. To keep going, to keep fighting, to keep believing, to keep standing. That's what's so difficult for men that's on death row. Or, or life in prison without parole. In essence, they don't really have any hope because they're not coming out. This is the life. They're going to die up in here. So what is it that they have to keep them motivated to go day in and day out? That's why the prison system is so wretched. 
because there's so many in there that has no hopes or whatever crime I commit in here, it doesn't matter because I'm not coming out anyway. And that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to make things hopeless. If I'm not in the word of God, I'm telling you, saints, I'm telling you, I know, I know what I'm sharing. I know what God has said when there's no time in the word. I mean, quality time. I mean, daily time, not just through the fasting and prayer, but a lifestyle when there's no time deep in the word, meditating on the word, crying out to God, being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And then you got children, you got grandchildren, they need divine protection. God said, he said, remember, Lord, remember what you said, Lord. Remember what you spoke, Lord God, your word to your servant that seeks your face day in and day out, Lord, that cries out to you, Lord God. Oh, my God, upon which you caused me to hope and to believe and to stand on against the rain, against the wind that's blowing, Lord God, to stand on the word, Lord, with everything that I'm seeing, everything that I'm hearing, Lord God, seems to be the opposite. Number four says, that's the next verse, but your word that brought hope, your word that's given me hope, this is my comfort. In my affliction. This is my comfort in my affliction. Even when you're obedient, you still encounter difficulty. I love Elijah because he did the word of the Lord. He proclaimed the word of the Lord. He had no idea that once he brought the word against Ahab in Jerusalem, I mean Israel, because of their allegiance to Baal. That he too would have to relate. He didn't know he had to go to the brook sheriff and be fed by ravens. Come on now. Be fed by ravens twice a day with bread and meat and drink water from the brook. He too encountered difficulties when there was no rain. He was affected also. And then when the brook dried up, he got a word from God. He got a word from God because God had this man in isolation because he was hiding out from Ahab because when there's no rain for them, it was a, it, was, it affected everything, their money, their life, their, 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 their ability to eat. Everything was affected. So he was like a plague to them declaring this word, but he too was affected. He had no idea he had to be fed by ravens at a brook. And then when the brook dried up, God said, now I'm going to send you to a widow and she's going to take care of you. Oh, my God. This is my comfort in my affliction. That's what it means. This, this is the word of the Lord comforts us when we're dealing with a sickness, when we're dealing with a setback, when we're dealing with hurt, when we're dealing with rejection in the name of G, when you're dealing with a layoff, when you're dealing with financial issues, when you're dealing with a mental strain, you're having problems in your relationship with your family, your children, your loved one, your spouse. In the name of Jesus, this is my comfort. This is what comforts me, Lord, is your word. I can stand on it even though I don't understand it, Lord. I'm hurting, Lord God. I'm broken, Lord God. But I trust you. I rely upon you because your word brings comfort. Your word brings healing. Oh, my God. That's what the word of God does. For your word has given me a life that I won't die and, get, and give up. The word, that's what the word is so powerful. The word of God is what moves the hand of God, the word of the Lord. Question one. There's about four or five questions in this, this, this setting here. Question number one. Does God really speak? Does God really speak? You know, it's amazing in the Old Testament. Every time they prayed, they had an expectation that God was going to speak. That's why Saul he said, I, I can't get a word. I'm dealing with the Philistine, the Philistines. I can't get a word. I can't get a word through dreams. I can't get a word through the prophet. I can't get a word through the, the, uh, the mechanism that the prophets use. I forgot the name now. To hear from God. He said, I can't get a word. So I need to go to a witch, a fortune teller, even though they've been kicked out of the land. But I got to get a word because I'm dealing with the Philistines and I'm scared. And I'm going I'm to see what, what, what uh, Samuel says. So does God really speak? Yes, he speaks to his word. 
He speaks through dreams and visions. He speaks through teaching of the word. That's why meditating on the word, meditating on the word, getting sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit, meditating on the word, studying the word. God begins to bring a sharpness to our ability to hear because it draws us closer and closer and closer to the Lord. So when you get close to a person that is talking, you're able to hear more distinctively. How can I discern God's voice while I'm praying and crying out daily? Remove the distractions like Hezekiah did for one. Isaiah the prophet came to Hezekiah the king. God had already saved him from Sennacherib. He did a mighty work, a miracle. Then he get a word from uh, Isaiah the prophet saying, get your house in order, you're getting ready to die. Immediately, immediately, Hezekiah turned himself to the wall and began to cry out and to pray. Why did he do that? To eliminate the distractions. We must be able to concentrate put our full attention when we're praying and crying out to God that I'm not missing anything, that I'm sensitive to his voice. When the Lord wakes you up in the, in the middle of the night, walk, the, walk your house, praying, walk the house, walk your house, your bedroom, praying, crying out to the Lord. God will give you a word, then go and, and, and go to that word and then meditate on the word and then pray the word because God is speaking. God is sharing his heart. God is answering your prayer. It's just one way. But I find, find it to be very effective. So God is always declaring and speaking. But like I said, we, we deal with so much in life. So much distraction comes against us. So many distractions. Got this going on, that going on, this concern. This pops up unexpected. Uh, a suddenly, a suddenly, something unexpected happens. Throws us off. The guy said, get back, get back on track. Yes, you got temporarily detoured, but get back on track. Because I have a purpose for you. What is causing the perceived delay to my consistent prayers and petitions? Sometimes God is just not speaking. He's observing, he's watching. Not that he forgets about us. He don't, it's not who he is. He's not that type of father. But he watches. How bad do you want me? How bad do you want me? How bad do you want to hear from me? It's just like talking to a child. And you told the child to do X, Y, and Z, and they didn't do it, and they did the opposite. That's just one example. Man, you're going to try to teach that child a lesson, but see, God is a loving father. He, he's not trying to hurt us, but he's also, he wouldn't be a, a loving father if there was no correction. If he just allowed us to do anything, like the man of God was saying, if he allowed us to do anything we want to do, that's not a loving father. That's what's part of the problem David had with his children. That's why Absalom was so critical of his father, because he did not handle the situation when Absalom's sister got sexually molested by his stepbrother. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Have I taken the necessary time to present myself before the Lord? And genuinely seek his counsel. You got, you know, the price is not cheap. Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. He coming to the point. He realizing now with reality, he's getting ready to take on the sins of the world. He's going to and he's going to be separated from his father. I think that was more detrimental than what he encountered physically. They've never been separated. Now his humanity is kicked in. He's going to become sinful. He's never experienced that. And he's crying out. He's praying with such fervency. The caterpillars in his, in his skin broke. Blood is dripping. So he was really praying, crying out, Lord, but not my will, but your will. See, that's love. That's what prayer does. Prayer begins to change us on the inside. That we get to a point, Lord, I just want your will to be done. Whatever, Lord, I just want to hear from you, knowing that I'm on the right track, Lord God. Whatever you say, Lord, I just want to hear from you, Lord. What are you declaring in this situation, Lord? What are you saying? Have I taken the necessary time 
quality time, quality time, intimacy with the Father in the name of Jesus. Intimacy, my God. Intimacy in the word, searching the word, searching the word, allowing the Holy Spirit to bring back scriptures that he has given us, searching the word, praying the word, meditating on the word, crying out to God with everything broken, completely broken, 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 broken before God, humble before God. Lord, I cannot make it without you. I need your intervention. I need to hear a word from you, Lord. I'm nothing without you. I can't pretend with you. You know the end from the beginning. You know the heart of every man that ever existed, every man and woman, every child, Lord. You know what's in their heart, Lord God. Yes, Lord. You see the warfare, Lord. You see the attacks, Lord God. Continuously in the word, continuously crying out. I mean, this is a lifestyle. Lives are in the balance. This, this is who you are. This is daily. This is not seasonal. This is not occasional. You don't take a vacation. This is who we are. You see, it's a process. It's a molding. Yes, Lord God. It's a molding, Lord God. It's a molding. We're the clay. He's the potter. He's molding us. He's breaking off. He's shaping us. That we are effective. We are glorifying him. We are beautiful to him. There's a beautiful aroma that is proceeding as ascending before him, Lord God. When we falter, when we make a mistake, we don't dwell in it. We don't, don't just wallow in it. We get cleansed. We come back. We come back. We come back, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. It's where David did when he was walking up the Mount of Olives. He had messed up. He, his, his, like I said earlier. His confidant that knew everything about him, that he shared those intimate details. That was Bathsheba's granddaddy. Bathsheba's grandfather. And he had Uriah, her husband, murdered. That was his Hithophel son-in-law. They say when the brother spoke, is like listening to God. So this dude was, he was a force to be reckoned with. Like listening to God, his counsel. Now he got Absalom, who has stolen the hearts of the people because of his, his, his male beauty. He was perfect. He was a perfect specimen from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. His hair was so thick and long. They had he cut it once a year, and they weighed it. They loved him because he was the king's son, but they loved looking at the brother. And now, so he, now he's getting counsel from Ahithophel. David got an issue. David got a problem. So he as he's walking up Mount of Olives, barefoot, head covered. He crying out to God. He's crying out to God because everything is in the balance. He's crying out to God. Satan trying to destroy him because Jesus was a direct descendant of David. The prophetic word had been declared. Have I taken the necessary time to present myself before the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings, Almighty God, first and the last, beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, bright and morning star. He is my protector. He's my provider. Yes, Lord, he's a son of God. His, his, he's a son of God. And he's a son of man. He's my savior. He's the Messiah. Yes. Have I taken the necessary, the quality time to present myself before the Lord? Because when we get to that level where there's intimacy, okay, cool, I still got time. When we get to that level where there's intimacy, I mean, there is a change that's being manifested. There is a change that has taken place. I love the Lord. I bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. I bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all oh, my soul, and forget not his benefits. Oh, my God. Wow. Five and six, please, the next slide. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. You are divinely faithful. We thank you for your word. Thank you for giving us a hunger, a desire to pray the word, to believe the word of the Lord. That you, 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 that prayer, there's a level of prayer, Lord God, that moves 
God. It moves the hand of God. Not manipulation, Lord God, because you are pure. You see everything. You are omnipotent. You are omnipresent. You are omniscient, Lord. We don't manipulate you. You're God. Yeah, you know the beginning from the end, Lord God. You're God. But we pray the word, Lord, because you're changing us. You're changing us that we will glorify you, that we will magnify you, that we will have an impact on these precious lives where souls are dying. They're dying every day. They're falling into hell. Hell has been in large saints. People are dying. They're dying and leaving time, moving into eternity. They don't know Jesus. So many precious souls don't know Jesus in that spirit of murder that was inherited the great. He killed all those babies. I mean, that spirit wanted to kill Jesus. So you know how vicious, murderous that he is. And they don't die. Not yet. They haven't been sentenced yet. So in essence, they're loose in the world. That's what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with. That's what the church is dealing with. Just like with Herod Agrippa. Now the acts hated the church, hated the church because that spirit that was in him, that was in him, hated God. Same spirit today, hate the saints. So what we see, this is a blueprint. Acts 12, 1 through 16 is a blueprint of the enemy. This is what's coming. This is what's coming. This is what's coming. I'm telling you, this is what's coming. Now, today, I read they got another virus that's coming on the scene. This stuff ain't stopping. Prayer, these are plagues, judgment. That's why God says there is a prayer. There's prayer that moves God that stop this plague, that's, that's protecting our, our society from these vicious, murdering criminals, these spirits, these murdering spirits that's raping and killing. They're loose, they're running rapid, saints. I come against the lullaby of the enemy that has so many of God's children in lullaby. We're tossed to sleep. We don't hear. We don't see because we, we got to pay the price. Then he, he said, he heard Catherine Kuhlman say, there's a price. And now he realized the price is prayer. There's a price because it's precious. It's precious. It's precious. Jesus will go into the mountains, go into the wilderness early in the morning, isolated and pray. Because he said, I need to get a word from my father. I only do. What I see, my father, ah, what I see. So there is a place in prayer where God begins to open up our eyes. We're able to discern more clearly, more, dis more distinctively. That's why I was saying prayer is the most powerful weapon gifted by God in the world. Because you're dealing with life, you're dealing with death. Psalms 27 and 8. Yes, when you said, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Seek in the face of God. And sometimes God does not, seems like he's listening, but he is, but he doesn't respond. So we have to continue to seek his face because when we're in those situations, then the Holy Spirit is able to bring back out of the well what we've been meditating on, what we've been studying, what we've been reading. He's able to bring it back. That's where the hope comes in, in my affliction. Your word says this, and then you begin to analyze spiritually what God is declaring, what God is saying. See, that's all a part of the meditation. Now I begin to analyze because I'm meditating on it. I begin to break it down. Yes, break it down so I'm able to, like, you know, like in professional and college sports, football and, and football specifically, they have a film room training where the coaches and the players break down the film of the team that they're about to play so they can learn their uh, tendencies. They can see their weaknesses. They can see their vulnerabilities. So when we are meditating on the word, like God is declaring, when we are crying out and praying and calling and seeking with supplication, which means asking, 
breaking it down. I'm begging you, Lord. Have mercy, Lord. I'm begging you, Lord. You are my father. I'm your son, Lord. God, help me, Lord. I'm in desperate situation. I need your presence, Lord. God, help me, Lord. Remember the word you gave to your servant that has caused me to hope. Remember what you declared, Lord. You don't lie, pretend, and make stuff up. You don't do that. Remember the word you gave to your servant, Lord. I, I stand on the promises of your word. I stand on your word, Lord God. Yes, yes, Lord, oh merciful God. Merciful God. You see all the kids that died in these fires now, Lord. That's the trend. And this winter, Lord, these cold where people, so many people in one house, one apartment, Lord God. There are like 27 people in a four-bedroom apartment in Philadelphia when it caught on fire the other day because they didn't have nowhere else to go. Oh, my God, all those babies died. And the elderly, Father God. Do not hide your face from me is what the word of the Lord is declaring. Do not hide your face from me, Lord God. Do not turn your, your servant away in anger, Lord. Blood out our transgressions. Yes, wash us from our iniquities. Cleanse us, Lord God. Cleanse us from our sinful behavior, Lord God. For grieving the Holy Spirit, Lord. That's what David was saying as he's walking up the mountain. I violated your word, Lord. I violated your word. I committed adultery, Lord. I killed your husband, Lord God. Oh, merciful God. Merciful God. Merciful God. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger, Lord God. You are merciful. You are full of compassion, Lord. Yes, you have been my help. You have been my help, Lord. You have a track record, Lord. You have a track record. Yes, of deliverance. Let's see. That's the prayer. That's the cry. That's yes, Lord God. See, that's the fervency. We're crying out day in, day out until the breakthrough comes. So until it's manifested, you don't give up. Even when you have a setback, you get back on the grind. You get back on the grind. You get back in the word by the grace of God, by the grace of God, his unmerited favor, by the grace of God. Oh, we bless you for your word, Lord. Thank you for the precious Holy Spirit, the paraclete, the comforter, Lord. It's your word that brings life. It's your word, Lord, that brings hope, Lord God. It's your word that brings divine protection, Lord. It's your word, Father. It's the word of the Lord, Lord God. Open up our understanding that we're able to discern the word of the Lord with understanding. We're able to hear your voice, Lord. Remove the distractions, Lord God, that has hindered us, Lord God. Forgive us for our sinful behavior. Turn our hearts back to you, Lord God. Turn our hearts back to you, Lord. Break the hardness in our heart. Break the hardness, Lord, as we read the word of the Lord, as we meditate on the word of the Lord, as we call on the word of the Lord, as we pray to the word of the Lord, as we seek the Lord, God begins to soften our hearts. He begins to remove the callousness in our hearts. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me or nor forsake me. Don't leave me in this position, Lord God. Don't leave me in this position, Lord God. I can't get out, Lord. I can't get loose, Lord God. It's like a blanket. Yes, Lord, those are dealing with oppression, depression, Lord. It's like a blanket that has come upon them, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, we take a stand against the spirit of depression. The scene they can't get loose. Yeah, they can't get out. Yes, Lord, they can't get loose. Songs of deliverance. We cry out for songs of deliverance, Lord. Songs of deliverance, Lord God, is able to bring a breakthrough. Song, song, songs of deliverance that's able to remove, Lord God, the heaviness. Is able to remove the heaviness, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, where a lot of people commit suicide. Because of the oppression, the depression, the heaviness. Yes, the constant bombardment of the enemy. It seems like it, it doesn't stop. Yes, they're constantly coming. They're constantly coming. We cry out, Lord. We cry out, Lord God. We cry out, Lord God. We cry out, Lord God. You are for loving Father, Lord God. We cry out, Lord. You are a miracle worker, Lord. We cry out for your forgiveness. We cry out for your compassion, Lord. We cry out for miracles to be manifested, Lord, based on the word of the Lord. Based 
based on what you've already decreed, what you've already declared, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things you do not know, you have not experienced, you cannot conjure up in your mind. You don't have the ability, you don't have the imagination to understand how wonderful, how awesome, how great I am. Because he said, I am magnificent, I am holy, I am righteous in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, yes, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, in the name of the Lord. Yes, you are my portion, O oh Lord. You are my portion, Lord, Lord. Even when the cards of the wicked have bound me, even when the person is in bondage like that man that had the legion of demons, even when the cards of wickedness have bound me, but I have not forgotten your word. The Holy Spirit kicks in. The Holy Spirit kicks in. There's a light that begins to shine in the midst of the darkness. In the midst of the darkness, there's a light that begins to shine. Now hope begins to develop. Yes, hope begins to develop because if, there, if God doesn't do it, you can't get out. You can't get loose. For real, real, you can't get loose if God is not intervening. We don't have the power. We don't have the authority. We can't get loose unless God intervenes. So imagine, imagine, imagine how many souls, how many souls that we know that has no relationship with the Lord that's bound up. They can't get loose. They don't know how. They don't have the power against the demonic dealing with generational spirits down through the bloodline even in acts 12 when the church was praying that, that kind of messed me up a little bit when the church was praying and god answered their prayer and our brother peter knocking on the door and they said oh it's just an angel it looked like Peter, because that was part of their superstition. Catch that. That's part of their superstition. Just like a lot of African Americans' superstition. Don't leave, don't, don't leave your shoes under your bed. Don't walk under a ladder. Don't break a mirror. I know some of you, some of us can relate to that. But that was part of their superstition. They praying and crying out to God. But they didn't discern that the answer was at the door. The young girl did. She knew his voice. She recognized his voice. And they shot her down. We don't want to be like that. That's why that, that prayer, our prayer, Lord, our prayer, our prayer is, Lord God, that we have discernment, that we have wisdom, how to get out of the situations we've gotten ourselves in because of our disobedience. Because to not listen to godly counsel, now we in a we got a problem. We got issues because we allow the enemy to get in. We open up the door and left the door open. We raised the windows and didn't shut it. We walked in disobedience. We didn't. Uh, we don't say it, but we try. We try to take advantage and manipulate your grace. Oh, God will forgive me. I, I do it now, but God, you know, God, you know, we don't say that, but our actions behind it, be, be, below the surface, that's, that's what's going on. And the enemy is very observant, like a roaring lion. There's nothing hidden in the spirit realm. Nothing hidden in the spirit realm. So the enemy is already looking for an opportunity. And we're playing with fire. Ah, let's move on. Question. What do you do when God is basically hiding? In essence, he's completely silent. And that happens. That happens more. That happens. I'm telling you, God is not answering that question, that concern, that problem. He's not forgotten about it. He, he's still observing. He's still watching. He's still looking, but... It seems like he's hiding. Where are you, Lord? Where are you, Lord God? Where are you, Father? I'm crying out day and night, Lord. I'm seeking your face, Lord God. I'm turning from my wicked ways, Lord God. 
Yes, I'm calling upon you. You said man should always pray and not lose heart, Lord God. Remember your word, Father. Remember what you said, Lord God. Where are you, Lord God? I need you now, Lord. But you have to continue. You have to continue to cry out. You have to continue to believe the Lord. When it seems like your faith is, is getting uh, lighter and slipping away, we talk to God, Lord, you see what's going on. Nothing is hidden from you. You see, Lord God, I'm struggling, Father. You see, Lord God, I'm hurting, Lord God. Why won't you answer? Why won't you respond? Why won't you show mercy, Lord God? You said you would, Lord. Your word, I'm declaring your word. I'm praying your word, Lord God. I'm seeking you day and night, Lord. I wake up in the middle of the night and I cry out to you. When I wake up in the morning, even when I'm getting prepared for work, Lord, I'm thinking about your word and what you said, Lord God. Where are you? What do you do when God is basically hiding, completely silent? You don't quit. I know that's easily said and, and done sometimes, but you can't quit. The Holy Spirit will help us. It may not happen immediately. It may not happen in a day or two, but it's coming. Hold on, it's coming. Hold on, his mercy endures forever. Hold on, his mercy endures forever. In the meantime, you keep allowing, asking the Holy Spirit, inviting the Holy Spirit to build me up. Strengthen me, Lord God. Strengthen me, Father. Build me up, Lord God. Help me, Lord God. You're very present. Help in times of need. I need you, Lord God. When you're experiencing a season of not hearing God's voice, how do you respond? Question. Something to ponder. Something to meditate on. How do you respond? How do you respond in the name of Jesus? How do you respond? Yes, Lord God. Praise, worship. Enter into his courts, the outer court. I enter into your courts. Then I go to the next court. Yes, yes, yeah, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his courts with praise. Then I uh, go into the holy of holies where the high priest was only allowed to go once a year to present the sins of the people. But that veil has been torn and Jesus on the cross, we have been invited to come before the throne. The Holy Spirit has given us a personal invitation 24-7, seven days a week. We've been invited to come before the throne, crying out to the Lord, being broken, being completely broken, being broken in the name of Jesus, being broken, humility. Yes, Lord, that touches the heart of God. Even with Ahab, as wicked as Ahab was, and so himself to sin. When Elijah, when God told Elijah, go and tell Ahab, I'm being ready to bring judgment against your brother. He told him he was going to die because he took uh, the brother's uh, land, killed the brother, took his land out. His wife was involved, Jezebel, who stirred him up. Ah, yes, Lord. See, them demons come to stir us up. That's what happened with Ahab and Jezebel. She stirred him up. Yeah. She harassed him. She pushed him to do evil, nagging him. That's what the enemy does. He tries to stir us up. It's not working. What's the use? What's the point? It makes no sense. God ain't going to answer. Why am I doing this? Why well, he won't bless me. I done messed up too bad. I done violated his word repeatedly. I can't get forgiven. I can't stop doing what I'm doing. What's the point now? The enemy is stirring us up like Jezebel did Ahab. But when when Elijah told Ahab, you're going to die. And they're going, the, 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 the dogs going to lick your blood like you did, like they did Nabal. You took that man's land. You killed him. The judgment is coming. 
your posterity, your children, your children, your whole family going to die. If you're in the city, they're going to die. In the fields, the birds going to eat them. And then in Jezebel, your wife is going to die too. It broke him. It broke this man. This, this is so, this is wild. It broke him. And he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and ashes, and cried out to God. God said to Elijah, look what happened to Ahab. He has humbled himself before me for three years. Three years. Then the brother went back to his own. <laughs> he went back to his old ways. My point, a breaking. If Ahab can get broken and touch God's heart, and this brother was just wicked, wicked. He wasn't as bad as Manasseh, but he was a bad boy. He, was, he sold himself to wickedness. He just didn't care. He just didn't care. He was a king. He didn't care. If Ahab could be broken and touch the heart of God, what does it say about us? That humility touches his heart. That humility, that brokenness does something to God. Ahab is a prime example. My God. So when you are experiencing a season of not hearing God's voice, how do you respond? That's one of the major, major ways you respond in the name of Jesus. We bless your name. Do you continue in prayer or do you stop praying? When you stop praying, you give the enemy as one. And now you, you got to start all over again. So that's, that's, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. You continue to cry out. You continue to stay on the word. You continue to throw yourself on the mercy of God. You continually to seek God because he don't lie. He don't pretend. He's not a fake. He's not like that. Oh, if I pray, we got this now. We got about 20 minutes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for your word, Lord God. We see what is happening, Lord God, in our society. We see what is happening in our society, Lord. We see this murdering spirit that is Roman, Lord. The same spirit that was in Herod the Great. Yes, in Herod Agrippa to try to kill Jesus and kill all those babies and try to kill the church, the, the church, Lord. We see the spirit of murder, the spirit of mayhem. We see it, Lord God. We are able to discern it through the word of the Lord. But we continue to cry out to you. We continue to stand on the word of the Lord. We continue to believe the word of the Lord. We continue to call upon you like you said in Jeremiah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Like you said in Jeremiah, Lord. You said for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, Lord. Thank you for thinking about us. Thank you for being concerned about us, Lord. Thank you for watching over us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for sending your word. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for being patient and long-suffering, Lord. You don't charge us when we initially mess up, Lord. You're merciful. You're kind. You're gentle. The Holy Spirit begins to deal with our heart. He begins to pull us back to you. He begins to change us if we submit. If we submit, Lord God, in the name of the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Let the word of the Lord get on the inside of us, Lord. Those that are sick. Those that are dealing with sickness, those that are dealing with relational, relational issue with their children or their loved ones, Lord. We pray, Lord God, they won't give up. They won't lose hope. They won't curse God. They won't criticize God. Even if they have been aggressive with you because you have not answered their prayers and they've been aggressive in their language, Lord. We pray that the blood of Jesus would cleanse, would wash would purify in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's your word. Then you will call upon us, Lord. You said, then you will call upon you and go and pray to you and I will listen to you. See, that those are covenant promises, Lord. You said, Lord, when we call, when we pray, when we seek you, Lord, you will listen, you will pay attention, you will respond. This is the season of miracles, Lord God. You're pouring out your spirit on all flesh, your young people, Lord. Your sons and daughters are prophesying. They're prophesying. They're prophesying. 
your young men are seeing visions, Lord God, your, your elderly, your mature men are dreaming dreams, you're speaking, you're declaring through your word, Lord God, through dreams and vision that lines up with your word, through the teaching of your word, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we pray, Lord, we don't miss the nuggets that you give us on a daily basis, Lord, because of the distractions. We don't miss the nuggets that you're providing, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, build up our faith. We know faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord and hearing the word of the Lord. Faith comes by hearing and hearing, Lord God. So as we pray the word, as we meditate on the word, Lord, you're building us up. We're becoming stronger, Lord, to believe you for that miracle, to believe you for that healing, to believe you for that breakthrough, believe you for that soul, Lord God. Yes, Lord, we've been crying out for years, Lord God. Bring back to our remembrance, Lord God, the prophetic word that you've given us. Bring back to our remembrance what the Holy Spirit has declared and decreed. Bring back to our remembrance, Lord God. Renew the spirit of our mind, Lord. As we read the word of the Lord, begin to let the word, Lord, the word has the power, the authority, begin to renew our mind, renew our mind. Yes, regenerate our mind, Lord God. We come against senility. We come against Alzheimer's, Lord God. We come against diabetes, Lord. We come against cancer, Father God. We come against mental attacks against the mind, Father God. We come against blood issues, Lord God. And then back issues, Lord, leg issues, Lord God. We come against divorce, Lord God. We come against rejection in the name of the Lord G. We come against rape, Lord God. We come against the thoughts of suicide, those thoughts that the enemy brings, Lord, those thoughts, Lord God. Yes, we cast down every imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We bring it to captivity to the obedience of Christ. You've given us that authority. We've given us that power, Lord God. We cast those thoughts down. We cast down fantasies, Lord. We cast down fantasies, Lord God, that has raptured our mind, those places in our mind where we've allowed the enemy access, Lord. Now that he's set up shop, Lord God, and not only has he set up shop, but he's called his boys, Lord, when the unclean spirit, Lord God, is cast out of a man, Lord God. He goes through dry places seeking, seeking, seeking rest, Lord God, seeking rest. He can't find it, so he says, I'm going back to my house, and he brings back more wicked spirits than himself, Lord. So we're dealing with highly intelligent demonic spirits, Lord God. We are no match, Lord God. We're dealing with ancient spirits, Lord God, highly intelligent. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. We need discernment, Lord God. We need to be able to discern, Lord. We need your wisdom, Lord, how to get out of these situations we've gotten ourselves in because of our disobedience, because of our lackness, Lord God, because of our lackness, Lord God, because of our I pride, Lord God, because, Lord God, yes, in the name of Jesus, we need wisdom how to get out of these situations, Lord God, that we're facing, Lord God, these demonic spirits that we're facing, Lord God, the voices, people are hearing voices, they're hearing voices, Lord God, they're hearing voices, Lord God, we pray that you would stop the voice of the enemy, you said we should know your voice, Lord, and not listen to the voice of a stranger, Lord God, that's your word, Lord God, we stand on the promises of your word, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we stand on your word, yes, we come against that lie that it don't take all this. It's a lie of the enemy. It's a lie of the enemy. Yes, it's a lie of the enemy. Lord God, release the, 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 the deception, Lord. Release the, cat, the spiritual cataracts off the eyes that we're able to see, Lord. We're able to see it against the fall, against the tree that has blocked our vision, Lord. Yes, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray for a divine visitation by the Holy Spirit, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you be begin to visit. You begin to visit our homes in the name of the Lord Jesus. You begin to visit us, Lord God. We need a divine encounter with you, an encounter with you, Lord, an encounter with you, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord God, people have been in seasons, Lord, where they've been dry, seasons for extended period of time where it's been dry. There is no fruit that's being manifested, Lord God. They're starving, Lord God. They mouth never Perish, Lord God, because they've been in seasons, long seasons, Lord God, where there's been no fruit, Lord God. We pray that you would turn those situations around. You would turn those seasons around, Father God, as we cry out to you, Lord, as we seek your face, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah. He was married 
to Ahab's, I think his daughter was married to Ahab's son or vice versa, I'm not sure, but he, he, they were related through marriage. And he went to visit Ahab. And Ahab was talking to him about uh, a town that Syria had that really belonged to them. And he said to Jehoshaphat, will you go to war with me? Jehoshaphat said, my military, I'm paraphrasing, my military is your military. I'm with you completely. But first, we must get a word from the Lord. So Ahab called his 400 false prophets. And they began to prophesy, go, you will be successful. Go to war, you will be successful. Jehoshaphat knew they were false prophets. He said, is there not a man of God here? He said, yes, there is one, Micaiah, but I hate him. Jehoshaphat said, you shouldn't be talking like that. You're the king. He said, go and get Micaiah, bring him out. And when they went to get Micaiah, the person that went to bring him before Jehoshaphat, and Ahab, he said, you must come in agreement with the other prophets. There has to be unison. What they say, you must say the same thing. He said, I will only speak what the Lord has told me. So when he brought him, he said, Ahab said to him, what is God saying? Should we go to war or should we not? Will we be successful? He said, yeah, go ahead. He said, <laughs> he said the same thing to the false prophet says, because he was ridiculing him. He said, yeah, go to war. You'll be successful. They have said, haven't I told you to tell me the truth? I'm paraphrasing. He said, yeah, I've seen the soldiers on a hill like sheep with no shepherd. They need to go back to their t towns, tents, or homes. And he said, I told you, he's telling Jehoshaphat, I told you the only thing he speaks is false. The only thing he speaks to me is evil. He said, I've seen in heaven. Okay. I've seen in heaven God surrounded by the host of heaven and he asked for us and a spirit came before him and he was looking for someone to speak to the false prophets to bring judgment on you that you would be you, it would come to your demise and one and, and one person said this one person said that but a spirit came before him he said i will go he said will you go he said yes he said you will you be successful successfully say yes he said, I'll be a lying spirit to those false prophets, Satan, speaking to all those demons. He said, if you go, and he said, in other words, these false prophets, they, they, they fill with demonic spirits that are lying to you. If you go to war, you're going to die. Jehoshaphat, man of God, listened, and he heard all of this. He was present. Ahab persuaded him, you wear the king's garments to war, and I'm going to put on the ordinary clothing. So they won't know. So he knew he, he, he knew the prophetic word was true, but he didn't fully believe it, Ahab. So they went to war. And the Syrian king told his leaders, we only want the king of Israel. That's your priority. We want to kill him. No one else, him. So when they saw Jehoshaphat, my Lord, in the king's garment, they assumed he was the king of Israel. So they began to attack. They were getting ready to kill him. He cried out. He cried out in that moment. He cried out. And God preserved his life in that moment. A cry, a simple cry. A cry out to God to show his greatness, his mercy, his kindness, his gentleness, his long suffering, his forgiveness, his purpose for your life. He cried out to God in that moment, and they realized it wasn't the king of Israel. That one cry. When he re returned back home, a seer came to him and met him and, brought, and said, you came in agreement with Ahab, who hated God? You were in agreement with him, and he hated God? You've done some good things in your life. That's why God is not bringing judgment. He's showing mercy. He's showing mercy. God, we cry out for mercy, Lord. You see the young people, Lord, and Satan is already targeted. 
to terminate your life tonight, tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday. The elderly, Lord, has been living 80, 90, 70 years, Lord, they have not committed their life to you. We cry out for mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord God. We need mercy. So you were merciful, God. What did you do to Jehoshaphat, Lord? You showed mercy. In the name of Jesus, you showed mercy, Lord. You showed mercy, Lord God. Micaiah warns Ahab. Yes, Lord God. Jehoshaphat, yes, he warned him. Micaiah warned Ahab. He warned him, if you go, you're going to die. He warned him. He did not listen to the counsel of the Lord. The same man, the same man that when God spoke judgment, it broke him. It broke him for three years. But God warned him. Micaiah said, I see, I see. Micaiah said, therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. And all the hosts of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramah, Gilead. So one spoke in the manner and another spoke in the manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord. That's why I was saying the cries, the cries of the righteous prevail if much. The cries stand before God at attention. The cries stand before God at attention like the Spirit did on the opposite end. But the cries stand before God at attention. And then it goes into his ears where the Lord says, Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Another, yes. Yeah. And the Lord said, I will persuade, and the Spirit, and before the Lord and the Spirit said, I will persuade him. The Lord said to him, in what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out, go out and do so. That was a demise. Jehoshaphat, listen her present and yet he still came in agreement we break the lie of the enemy we break the lie of the enemy and we come in agreement with deception with deception lord we break the lie of the enemy give us the ability to discern your voice give us the ability to discern your voice when you're speaking lord god when you're speaking and declaring lord god so many souls in the balance so many souls in the balance, Lord God. You're visiting. You're speaking through visions. You're speaking through dreams, Lord. You're speaking through your word daily, nightly. You're speaking, Lord God. You're speaking. Give us the ability to discern your word, Lord. Give us the ability, Father, to discern your word with understanding. We need clarity, Lord. We need to hear you with clarity, Lord God, that we know what we must do. In the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, saints. Hallelujah. These are critical seasons we're in. This is critical time in which we're living. Critical times when lives are in the balance. Critical times in which we're living when lives are in the balance. We cannot afford to not pray. We cannot afford not to cry out to God. We cannot afford to miss God, to miss God, to miss God. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. We must, we must spend time in fervency and prayer. We must spend time in the word. These are the last days. These are the last days. Hell is broken loose and it's only going to get intensified. These various, these various, this tea, they're coming. They still keep coming. A new one, like I said earlier, has, has come on the scene in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord God, we pray for divine protection on our minds, on our minds, divine protection on our minds, Lord, that we're able to be able to think clearly. 
Remove the debris, remove the debris, remove the lust, Lord God. Remove the lust, Lord God. Remove, Lord God, the bondages, alcohol. I'm just saying it because, because these are contributing factors that has, they're feeding. They're feeding the enemy. They're building him up. It's like he's lifting weight, like he's pumping iron, like he's lifting weight, like he's running heels. Hi, yeah, yeah. When we live a lifestyle, that's what it does to the enemy. He gets, he gets, he gets bigger. He gets stronger. He gets more aggressive. In the name of the Lord G, we're dealing with aggressive spirits, aggressive spirits. But we stand on God's word. We stand on the word of the Lord. We stand on the word of the Lord. We stand on the word of the Lord. We declare the word. We declare the word. We declare God's word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we declare his word with power, with authority, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing that comes to break the yoke, that enables us to fulfill the divine purpose of God. A fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. That's our cry, a fresh anointing. Divine visitations in our sleep, Lord God. Divine visitations throughout the day in the name of Jesus. Divine visitations throughout the day in the name of the Lord. Bring the word, make it alive. Let the word become alive, Lord. Become alive that we're able to see. We're able to see with clarity. We're able to discern, Lord God, with clarity. Strengthen our physical bodies. Heal the brokenhearted. Heal the depressed. Lift up those, Lord, like mom green, dad green. Yes, Lord God, Sister Cheryl Valley. Yes, lift them up, Roy Edwards. That's been on the prayer list. That's been dealing with a sickness. Heal the families, Lord, that lost loved ones. Like mom Constance family, the Minor Smith family. Yes, Lord, I, I may have I forget others. I apologize, no disrespect. But they've been grieving. You're a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, Lord. But you're able to comfort. You're able to comfort, Lord. You're able to comfort, Lord. We don't feel like we can go any further, Lord God. Mm, just like when David and his those <laughs> men of his that have been rejected from society, had issues, had debts, and so forth. Yes. Went against the Amalekites because they had burned down Ziglag, took their wives, took their children, they went after them. But when they came to the brook where the water was rampant, there was a portion of those men that said, I can't go any further. I can't go any further. Yet, they're, yet they're, 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 their wives have been kidnapped. Yet their sons have been and daughters have been stolen or kidnapped. I can't go any further. God, strengthen us. Strengthen us that we're like eagles. We're running like horsemen. We're flying like eagles. Eagles can see miles. And I don't know if it's 10. I believe it's 10 miles. Don't quote me. I think they can see 10 miles away with accuracy. Them boys are bad. And when they're hurting, they go fly, fly up. Where they can't have, no one can have access to them. And they get healed. That's that isolation. Elijah was in by the brook, but no one was there. That's the isolation when he went to where the widower was. I think it's Sidonia. That's where Ahab, I mean, that's where Jezebel's daddy was from. It's amazing. In their own backyard. The enemy couldn't find them. The enemy couldn't find them. Ahab, Ahab had all the other communities, the leaders, the kings to sign a decree. I, ain't, I, haven't seen, I haven't seen Elijah. I don't know where he's at because it was desperate tiger. There was no dew. There was no water. But God preserved him. And Satan didn't know where he was. That's the power of God. I hide under your protection. Uh, you're my fortress, Lord. You're my fortress. You're my hiding place, Lord. You're my shield, Lord God. You're my buckler, Lord God. Yes, Lord. There's a place in you. The enemy has no access because he don't know everything. There's a place in you, Lord. We can get renewed and refreshed like the eagle that flies high up in the mountain and get regenerated, get refreshed, get renewed. Give us the ability to discern, Lord. Like Elijah said, Lord, you said rain. I don't see it but i hear it i hear it because of my proximity to you lord i'm able to hear the rain nobody else can hear it i can hear the rain seven times the brother prayed seven times he put his head between his his knees 
We went up and told his servant, do you see anything? No, sir. He kept praying. Do you see anything? No, sir. He kept praying. Do you see anything? No, sir. He kept praying. Do you see anything? No, sir. He kept praying. Do you see anything? No, sir. He kept praying. Do you see anything? No, sir. Six times. Kept praying. Seven times. Do you see anything? I see what looks like a hand, a small hand from a distance. <laughs> Breakthrough. Man of God. Man of God. Stop the rain. It had light passions like we do. Man of God, miracles being manifested. But he was in so such close proximity to God that he was able to hear. He was able to hear. He was able to hear. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. I bless his holy name. I'm two minutes over. I apologize. But God is moving in this season. Don't miss it. Yes, we got to be able to run like horsemen. Don't miss it. We got prayer tomorrow night. Don't miss it. I think it starts at 6 on the weekday, 6, 6.30. And the word starts at 7. Yes. Thank you. Bless you. Glorify the Lord. We bless you. We glorify you. We magnify you. For just giving us the opportunity, Lord, to stay in your presence. Just giving us the opportunity to come to, to me to be intimate with you, you loving father, you're compassionate, you're gracious and you're kind, you're gentle, you're long suffering, you're forgiving. Oh God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Because you're faithful. Even we have not been faithful and loyal and true to you, you're faithful. You're giving us chance after chance after chance. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't like crying. I don't like crying. I don't like it. But there's a praying. As a matter of fact, I can't help it. There's a praying. I don't like it, but there's a praying. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Lord. Good night. It ends our time of prayer. Good night. I'm signing off. Good night. Ah.